Okay, this is a review of our unit on exponential and logarithmic functions. Um, actually, this is the first half of the review, part one, and uh, part two will be in a separate video. Please put your pencils down. Do not copy off of me. You will not learn anything that way. So watch what I'm doing, learn how to do it, but then go back and do it by yourself and make sure that you can get the right answer. That's how you learn. Okay, we've worked with uh, solving inequalities with exponential and logarithmic inequalities, but if I actually give you the graph, it's even easier than what we've learned before. Um, I'm giving you the breaking point right here. All right, we want to know where for which x values make the function greater than 10. All right, now this red line represents 10. So right here, this is where the two are equal. This dot represents uh, whatever this x value is. Well, it's negative 1.66. Um, this is where the function equals 10. Now, we want to know where the function is greater than 10. Now look, um, when we say greater than, are we thinking above or below? I'm really hoping you said above right now. Okay, when we say greater than, we're thinking above. So we want to know for what x values are we above 10. Okay, now look, um, let's just travel along this graph and see what happens. Obviously, down here, uh, we are below the, the, uh, the 10. We're below 10, the red line. So. Um, in these x values, we're below, 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 below. Bam! This is the breaking point. And then after that, we're above, 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 above. So everything to the right of the uh, critical value here is below. So this is the below area. Okay? This is the part that we don't want. Um, everything to the left of this critical value, this is where it starts to be above, because we were below, 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 critical value, above, 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 as we continue to the left. So every, all the x values on the right will give, uh, are th that represents where the function is uh, below 10, less than 10, and everything to the left is where the function goes above 10. Okay, uh, because it says greater than, we want the above part. So, um, this is what we're talking about. If we were to graph this on a number line, we'd be graphing an arrow going to the left. Okay, that's the above part of the graph. All right, and uh, so in interval notation, and that's what you're being asked to write, this would be negative infinity to negative 1.66. So negative infinity to negative 1.66. Will this be uh, round or square? It's going to be round because it is strictly greater than 10, not equal to. So we don't want to include the critical value. This would be like an open circle if you want. Okay, maybe I should put an open circle right there. All right, um, so in fact, like if I wanted to graph this on a number line, I could use this number line right here and go bam, and then draw my arrow to the left. Okay, that's it though, very easy. So looking at number two as another example, are we looking above or below when I look at this symbol? Okay, this says log base 4 of x is less than or equal to 3, so you should be thinking below. Okay, so we are interested in the x values that will uh, lead to the graph being below. Okay, so look, as I travel along this curve, you can see that I'm below 3. All right, this red line represents 3. So I'm below, 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 bam! This is the critical value. And then I'm above, 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 above. 
All right, we want the part that's below. So we're talking about this side of the graph. Okay, because this is the side of the graph where it's below. All right, now we're just talking about the x values when we make our interval notation. So this is from uh, negative infinity. Um, wait, I almost messed up. This is a log function. So um, I almost forgot just then. Uh, but this has an asymptote. So we are not going to say negative infinity um, because there's an asymptote here at zero. All right. I mean, you see the graph getting closer and closer to this asymptote. Okay, there's my asymptote. So we're not going to touch the asymptote. We're definitely not going to go past the asymptote. So we're not going to say um, negative infinity to 64. Instead, we're going to say 0 to 64, all right, from the asymptote over to 64. Um, actually, will I use a round uh, parentheses this time, or will I use a square bracket? This time it's going to be the square bracket because it says or equal to 3. So we can include this point. All right. So if I were to graph this on a number line, I'd have a closed circle and I'd be have my uh, graph going to the left. But then I'd hit the asymptote and I'd have to put an open circle. All right. Um, don't worry about the graph part, though. Um, this is what I'm asking you for, the interval notation. All right, we'll practice that again uh, on part two. But um, I hope, I'm hoping you find that pretty obvious. All right, let's move on. Let's practice our word problems. Now, um, it seems like these word problems were, were on our last test. But last time, we were always given the time, all right, and the rate. Um, so uh, all we had to do was plug everything in and get the answer. But this time, most of the time, we're not given t. t is the thing that we have to find. And for that reason, we wind up using logarithms. OK, so you deposit $1,500 into a, an account that is compounded continuously. Boom. That tells us that we're going to use the PERT formula here. This is for continuously. OK, um, all right, and we're going to do that for 18 years. All right, so first of all, the model. Um, I feel like using Y instead of A. That bothers me. OK, I just like to use Y for everything. So uh, for my model, I'm going to put um, Y equals uh, P, all right, so that's 1,500. Um, that's the P. Now E. Uh, the rate, okay, guess what? We don't know the interest rate um, because uh, we're not given it. It says, what is the interest rate? So we're just going to have to leave that um, as R. Um, but we know that's going to be for 18 years. Okay, so we can go ahead and put in the 18. I think I'll put the 18 in front of the R. So that just makes me more comfortable. So I will say 18R. So there is our model. OK. Um, now, if you want to have $20,000 in 18 years, um, what must be the interest rate? OK. Well, if $20,000 is the amount that we'll have years later, that's what y is for. So I'm going to put the 20,000 in for the y. So this is going to become 20,000, all right, is equal to 1,500 e to the 18r power. Uh, our first step should be to divide both sides by 1,500. OK, um, so 20,000. All right, divided by 1,500. 
Okay, so that's 40 over 3. Um, don't make that a decimal because you'd have to round. So we'll just have to leave it 40 over 3. Okay, so 40 over 3. Do not round. 40 over 3 is equal to e to the 18r power. So we have to solve this for r. When you have a variable in the exponent, that's when you're going to use log form. Okay. So let's go to log form. We have to start with the base here, base e. Um, so looking at that, in your mind you might be thinking log base e, and then these two things are going to change sides. Uh, so the 18 r is going to come to the left, all right, and the 40 over 3 is going to come to the right, all right. But we don't really put log base e, do we? All right, log base e is the natural log. So let's put natural log 40 over 3 instead. Feel free to skip this step and go straight to this. Okay, if I want to get r, I just need to divide by 18. So I will divide uh, by 18 on both sides. Okay, so that is going to give me r. All right, and I can just put this entire thing in my calculator. All right, I'll have to move it over a little bit. Um, so I could just put natural log of 40 over 3. Okay, and uh, I could put all that over 18. Okay, so I get a 0 0.1439. Uh, because we're finding the interest rate, you're going to want to write down four decimal places at first. So 0.1439, remember that. Um, because we write interest rates as percents. So we're going to go ahead and convert this by moving the decimal point twice. So we would need an interest rate of 14.39 percent and uh, this is how I want your R value to be written okay that's it uh, for number three all right you buy a new car for twenty seven thousand dollars the value decreases by thirteen point five percent each year all right we need a model for this okay well um, it's decreasing this is not compound interest or anything, so it's just going to be our standard, uh, you know, growth and decay situation. Where are those values? Um, yeah, so we're just talking about these. Because it's decreasing, we're going to just do this one. So that's what we're doing. Okay, so that's why, as far as the model, we're thinking y is equal to the initial amount, which is 27,000. And then it's 1 minus uh, the rate. So that's um, move the decimal point twice. So that's going to be 0 0.135. And to the t power. OK, because we, we don't know the time. It's a model. OK, in fact, make sure you don't put in any, uh, anything for t. So that's our model. Now, when will the car be one-third of its original price? Well, I think the easiest thing to do, since we're given the initial value, um, let's just figure out what one-third of the original price would be. So what's 27,000 divided by 3? All right, you should be able to do this in your head, but if you're uncomfortable. All right. Can you see why you should have known that? Because uh, what's 27 divided by 3? OK, that's 9. And then just add the 0, so 9,000. All right, so obviously 9,000 is 1 third um, of the original price. OK, so 9,000, that's the eventual value. So when we set this up, we're going to say, OK, 9,000 should equal 27,000 times 1 minus. Um, let's go ahead and uh, we're going to have to use this later. So let's make this simpler by uh, doing this subtraction. 
So what is 1 minus 0.135? All right, that's 0.865. So I'm going to use that instead of this because it's shorter. Okay, you could still get the right answer if you use this whole thing. Um, that's fine. I don't. Uh, it doesn't bother me. Um, okay, so that's to the t power. So we're trying to solve for t because it says when. When will it uh, uh, be one third of its original price? Okay, so we should really um, divide by twenty seven thousand. Um, you should be able to guess what you're going to get when we do this division. Okay, and you'll you'll see that we didn't even really need to be given the initial value to do this. Um, guess what? If I do nine thousand divided by twenty-seven thousand, I get one third. All right, we knew that because it had to be one third of its original price, so it had to be one third for the answer here. Okay, um, so fine and dandy. So we have one third is equal to 0 0.865 to the t power. And we're trying to solve this for t. Uh, of course, this is a logarithm situation. Anytime you're trying to find a variable that's in the exponent, logarithms are the way to go. Okay, so if I rewrite this in log form, and you know we always start with the base. And so we're doing log form, so we'll say log base. So this is log base 0 0.865. Now the 1 third and the t are going to trade sides of the equation. So the t will be over here. The 1 third is going to be over here. This is not an exponent. It's on the same line with the log. It's just that this hangs low. Any who's all, uh, we just need to evaluate this and that'll be our answer. Um, but uh, remember, we will evaluate this using our change of base formula. So we will do log of one third over uh, log of 0 0.865. -er. Okay, so just put that in your handy dandy calculator and you will have the answer. Okay, might as well move this off to the side. So uh, here I go. So um, I will do log of one third. Okay, over log of zero point eight six five. Kabam. So that's seven point five. Eight round up. So seven point five eight years. All right, that's when. That's how long it will take for the car to uh, be one third of its original value. Okay, let's check in on our old friends who live in Ugabuya. Um, yeah, I just made that up. All right, Ugabuya had a population of 2,300,000 people in 1985. Okay, since then the population has increased at a rate of 2.4% uh, per year. Write a model to estimate the following information. Okay, so population. Uh, we're talking about simple growth. This is not a uh, compound interest or anything. So we're talking about this formula right here. Okay, so um, we always start with the initial amount. So this will be 2,300,000. Um, it'll be one plus the rate. Okay, the rate is 0 0.024. So I'm doing one plus 0 0.024. Okay, to the t power. Now, if you're really slick about it, you won't leave it as one plus 
0 0.024. 1 plus 0 0.024 is just 1.024. So that's what the cool kids do. So let's be the cool kids today. You know, if you're not cool, just fake it. You know, nobody knows. Fake it till you make it. That's what they say. Um, so kabam. That's 1 plus. Uh, you get it. All right, so the current population, current meaning the year 2014. Let's see what's going on. So for the current population, of course, I'm just going to put in the correct number of years. Am I going to put in 14? Uh, oh, no, I think not. I need to figure out how many years it's been since 1985. Okay, so from 1985 to uh, 2014, how many years is that? Okay, well, um, let's see, from 1985 to 2000, that was uh, 15 years. And then, uh, so another 14 years, so that's gonna be, that's 29 years. All right, if you didn't understand that somehow, uh, you could just do 2014 minus 19, 85 okay that's 29 years okay so fine so t is equal to 29 um, so I'm just gonna plug in 29 for t that is all okay um, so here we go 20 uh, 2,000 I'm sorry two million three hundred thousand Boom, boom, okay. Um, times 1.024 um, to the power of 29, we said. Okay, so that population is now, um, let's see, comma, comma, 4,575,000 All right, and we will round to the nearest person. Okay, 575, 374, round up. Okay, um, you can't have pieces of people, so uh, always round people to the nearest whole person. Now, if you threw some decimals on there, am I going to mark it wrong? No, so don't cry. All right. Um, now, when will the population be 3,000? Now, let me make this clear. You are not allowed for these problems to just estimate by uh, typing your equation into the table function and just looking for 3,000. All right, that might get you a pretty good estimate, and that might be a good way to check your answer, but um, we know logarithms now, so I require you to show your work, do the algebra, and your uh, time should be correct to the decimal, to the hundredths place. Okay, so no, no guesswork. Um, all right, so when will the population reach 3 million? So this is the eventual years later population, so that will be plugged in for y. So this equation, i got to leave myself some space. This equation is going to be 3 million is equal to, all right, the rest of it, so um, 2,300,000 times 1.024 to the t power. So we have to solve this for, for time. How do we do that? Um, let's divide by 20, whoops, 23 million, um, not 23 million. Let me space this out better. We're dividing this by 2,300,000 on both sides. Okay, um, let's see what we get. Um, do you guys know that we could just cancel out all these zeros and make our lives a little bit easier? If I cancel out the five zeros, that would be 30 over 23. Um, so you know what, I mean, you should be able to do this in your head because these will cancel out. 
and this is a prime number so it's just gonna the answer is gonna be 30 over 23 okay if you're uncomfortable with that you could sit there and uh, you know type in the whole thing okay three one two three four five six okay and then two three one two three four five okay 30 over 23 but you should have been able to figure that out anyway don't make a decimal because um it's not a it, it's not a nice decimal it, it, it's messy so leave it like this because no rounding so we have this is equal to 1.024 to the t power when you want to find a variable that's in the exponent you want logarithms whether you realize it or not okay so let's rock the logs starting with the base okay so starting with the base so that's log base something this is the base so 1.024 as always when we change forms these two things will trade sides so the t is going to come over here okay and this fraction is going to come over here 30 over 23 okay so if we can put this in the calculator somehow that will give us our answer. Of course, we'll need the change of base formula. So we will wind up doing log of 30 over 23 uh, over log 1.024. And that is going to give us our time. OK, so here we go. Log. Um, what did I say? 20? No. I lied. Log 30 over 23. Okay. Over log 1.024. Kabam. So that is 11.20. All right, that's how long it will take, 11.20. All right, just a little over 11 years. Now, but this time you were given an actual starting year, all right, 1985. So if I say, well, when will the population reach this? Um, the answer to the question, when, if you say when, oh, 11.2 years. Um, that's not as meaningful as if you told me the year. So I want you to give me both. Uh, give me the T value, but then what year will it be 11 years after 1985? Obviously the decimals won't come into play when you're saying the year. Um, you should be able to do this in your head, right? Because um, you know, we're thinking uh, approximately 11 years. 10 years after 1985 would be 1995. So 11 years would be 1996. Okay, so 1996. All right, I mean, if you had to do 1985 uh, plus 11 in your calculator, go ahead, if that's what you have to do. Do you. All right, but that is it for uh, problem number five. Okay, these problems are beefy, man. They're beefy. All right, let's look at number six. You deposit $7,000 into an account that earns 5.6% annual interest compounded continuously. All right, that means the PERT formula. Okay. Um, model the investment. Oh, right, so we'll have Y equals 7,000. All right, we're doing the PERT, so we're going to have E. And now it's time for the rate. Well, that R is equal to 0 0.056. All right, got to move the decimal point twice. And then T. Is that, what is that? I don't need that. 
t. Um, so bam, there's the model. Now what? How long will it take for investment to double? Okay, well, they gave us the initial amount. So if this doubles, what will it be? Uh, yeah, uh, I know you said the right answer. If 7,000 doubles, it'll be 14,000. So that will be the eventual amount years later. So we put that for y. Um, but right now, it's 7,000. So we'll just write down the rest of the formula. The model that we just found. Now we're trying to find t because it says how long. Okay, so of course you're going to divide by 7,000. And you should already know you're going to get 2 because it, it's doubled. So that's why we picked the 14 in the first place. Okay, um, so this is going to give us 2 equals e to the 0 0.056 t power. If you want a variable that is in the exponent, you're going to need logarithms. Okay, um, start with the base. Better leave a little space this time. Um, yeah, the base is e. So normally we would go log and then write the base. That'd be like log base e. Um, and these two things would switch sides. All right, so I need my 0.056t comes to the left, and the 2 comes to the right. All right, but log base e uh, is just the natural log, right? So we would never really write log base e. Instead, we would go straight to natural log. All right, natural log 2. Okay, anyway, we're still trying to get t. So uh, what we want to do is divide both sides by that decimal. Okay, so that will give us our t value. All right, natural log 2 over, all right, let's go. So natural log 2 over 0 0.056. All right, so that is 12.38 years, round up. All right, so it will take 12.38 years for your investment to double at this interest rate compounded continuously. Okay, that was number six, ladies and gentlemen. Here comes number seven. You deposit $6,000 into an account that earns 10.2% interest compounded quarterly. All right, that's four times a year, so n equals four. As soon as I see that, where are those formulas? Quarterly. Um, I know I'm going to be using this formula with the n. All right, so quarterly is four. Semi-annually would be two. Monthly would be 12. Daily would be n equals 365. We haven't used this one very often, but if it said weekly, um, did you guys know that there are 52 weeks in a year? Yeah, there are. Check it out. So n would be 52 for weekly. Okay, so make sure you know all those n values because they're great. All right, so anyway, we're using that model up there. So um, you deposit $6,000. So y equals 6,000. All right, so what we had was 1 plus, and then had this fraction. So up here is the rate, decimal twice. So that's going to be 0 0.102 is the rate. Um, down here was n, all right? Quarterly is 4. And up here is nt power, nt. So this is 4t. Uh, just leave tst, don't plug anything in there. So that is the model. Sweet. All right, now, how long? Well, that's the t value, so we have to find it. How long will it take for your investment to triple? 
Well, our initial investment is $6,000. If it triples, it will be $18,000. Okay, so it would be like this. Oh, look at all that space. I'm going to use this space. Um, so if it triples, it would be $18,000. So 18000 is equal to 6000 one plus zero point one zero two oh four to the four t power of course your first step would be to divide both sides by six thousand and of course you know you're gonna get three so you really you really could skip this step but as a teacher I'm gonna show every step okay alright so this is gonna be three kabam um, is equal to one plus now, um, I'm curious if this will make a nice tidy decimal. If it will, uh, you know, use it. If it doesn't, we're st we have to stick with the mess. Let's see if it makes a tidy, a finite decimal, one that stops. Okay, so one plus um, fraction mode uh, 0 0.102 over yeah kabam uh, this seems it's finite you know it doesn't take up the whole calculator screen or anything and it seems easier to use than this so I'm gonna rock this now where'd it go I miss it come back 1.0 Okay, that's the parentheses, all right, to the 4t power. Look, um, again, let me make this clear. No rounding, okay? Um, if you want to use this decimal, you got to use all of the decimals. So if you see decimals going brrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
All right, almost 11 years. Um, now notice, you didn't. You don't have to type it all in at once. Um, if you want to, you can do it uh, in stages. So um, if you wanted to, you could do log three, and I'll do old-fashioned divided by log um, 1.0255. And I could hit enter. Get this decimal. Don't round though. I still haven't divided by four. So I can just hit divided by, and it's dividing my previous answer by four. Okay, so you see I still get the same answer. So if you'd rather do it in stages, that's fine. Just no rounding until the end. All right, that was number seven. All right, we need to solve this inequality. All right, by the way, this eight is not part of the problem. All right, it's problem number eight. Um, we need to solve this inequality algebraically, and then we need a graph uh, on a number line, and we need to write the solution set in interval notation. So it's all about finding the critical value, and we do that by temporarily uh, looking at the related equation which would be um, 4 to the x plus 3 power equals 1024. Now if you can make these like bases, that's the best thing to do. So let's consult our chart. There's our 4, there's our 1024, that's 4 to the 5th power. Okay, so that means I have 4 to the x plus 3 is equal to 4 to the fifth power. If I have like bases, that means the exponents will be equal. So that means x plus 3 must equal 5. And I can subtract 3 from both sides. And x equals 2. Now that is not the answer. That is simply a critical value. Um, now I will graph that critical value on my number line. Okay, so look, here is 2. All right, this is where the function equals 1024. I want to know where is the function greater than 1024. Uh, I can't assume it will be to the right, by the way. Um, let's see, open circle or closed circle, guys? Open circle. All right, this is greater than. If it had been greater than or equal to, then it would have been a closed circle circle to show that we were including the two. Two is not included in the solution. Um, let's see, uh, so we have to pick a test value. All right, um, an easy test value to use uh, for these would be zero. So I'm gonna use a test value of zero. Zero, obviously, is to the left of two. It's gonna be over, over there. So I'm gonna test uh, let me leave space. Okay, I'll do it down here. I'm going to test um, x equals 0. All right, if I do that, I have 4 to the 0 plus 3 power is greater than 1024. Question mark. I don't know if this is true or not. I'm asking. So um, that means is 4 to the 3rd power greater than 1024, all right? Zero goes away, question mark. What is four to the third power? Uh, four to the third power is only 64. Uh, is 64 greater than uh, 1024? Uh, clearly, no. So that means this test of zero, that is a fail, all right? So that means this on the left is the no side of the line. All right, there won't be any solutions over here to the left of 2. That means that this side must be the yes side where all the solutions would be. Everything over here, if I plugged it in, would be true. All right, so when I finish my graph, all right, because I'm supposed to graph on a number line, that's just an arrow going towards the yes side where all my solutions are. So this is what my graph would look like. Now, as far as interval notation, 
uh, I'm just going to reflect what I have here. It's going from 2 to infinity. So I'm going to have 2 and I'm going to have infinity. Infinity always gets a round. Will this one be round or square? Uh, it'll be round because the same reason this is an open circle. This has to be strictly greater than uh, 1024, not equal to. If I use 2 itself, it's equal, not greater. Um, so I can't use 2, so I leave it um, open circle. And parentheses also means don't include the 2. So there you go. Um, there's your graph, and this would be your interval notation. Let's do that one more time with logarithms. Uh, be careful, though. When you think about logarithms, please just remember that logarithms have an asymptote. And if you're dealing with a parent function with nothing being added or subtracted, um, the asymptote is the y-axis. Okay, so just remember, so these uh, log functions uh, generally do this type of thing. Um, but they don't go, uh, they don't reach zero, because that's the asymptote, and they definitely don't go past zero, no negatives. So um, we won't be dealing with uh, anything about um, negative infinity. Um, it will, we'll have to deal with a zero and to the right. Um, okay, you know what, that reminds me. Uh, this was supposed to be less than or equal to, yeah. I don't know what happened there. All right, I'll fix it on your paper. You'll never see that that was ever wrong. All right, so this is the situation. So once again, let us uh, look at the related equation, which would be, all right, log base 6 of 3x equals 2. I would have to immediately rewrite this in exponent form. So bring down the base, which is 6. All right, in exponent form, do not bring down the LOG. All right, now these two change sides. All right, we're not in log. A lot of people keep bringing the log down. No, we're going from log form to exponent form. No more log. So the 2 comes over, the 3x goes over there. 6 squared, of course, is 36 is equal to 3x. Um, I will divide by 3, and that's 12. All right. So x equals 12, that is my critical value. That's not the solution, but it is my critical value. So um, number line. Okay, so I have my critical value of 12. Am I going to do an open circle or a closed circle? All right, this time I'm going to do a closed circle because it's less than or equal to 2. Um, but be careful, guys. Um, 0 is hanging out over here somewhere. And please remember that 0 is our, let me see if I can steal this, zero is our asymptote so we can't go past that so no negative infinities under any circumstances okay so we need a test value um, either on the left side or the right side but we can't use zero though all right that's uh, not in the domain that's the asymptote can't go there so um, my favorite thing to use is one for this type of problem since I can't use zero I use the next best thing, that's 1. So I'm going to use a test value of 1. OK, so test x equals 1. Now, please don't try to use uh, one of these equations down here. You have to go back to the um, original inequality. OK, so I'm testing log base 6 of 3 times 1. Okay, um, is less than or equal to 2. Now that's a question mark. I don't know. Obviously, uh, 3 times 1 uh, is just 3. So, you know, I'm just going to erase that. Okay, um, 
so got to evaluate this uh, now we can't go switching forms all right because we don't have any rules for changing forms that will apply to an inequality so what we need to do is use our change of base formula okay so we need to do log 3 over log 6 like that and see if that is less than or equal to 2 okay let's go so log 3 over log 6 okay that is 0 0.61 all right, and that should have been a question mark still. So 0 0.61. Is that less than or equal to 2? Uh, yes. Yes, it is. Okay, so that means this is the yes side um, of the line. All right, everything to the left of 12, that's where the solutions will be. Uh, this is the no side. All right, so there won't be any solutions over there. But once again, be careful. Um, I'm saying this is the yes side, but kabam! Open circle at the asymptote there. All right, you can't go past it. So this is like a little segment. All right, so as you draw your graph, and uh, no, our graph doesn't really, you don't really put an asymptote on a number line graph. I just put that there so you would understand why I'm stopping okay um, so this would be your graph from 0 to 12 open circle because that's the asymptote and uh, so all we need is interval notation so the interval notation would be from 0 to 12 so I'm gonna put 0 comma 12 the 12 gets a square bracket because it's included close circle all right, the zero doesn't, because that was the asymptote, doesn't get included. And there you go. All right, man, we are getting close to an hour on this uh, video. All right, but we're down to the last three problems. All right, this didn't look as long as it turned out to be when I first started. Uh, okay, so I'm going to go kind of fast. I, I hope you don't mind. Um, Let's subtract 9 from both sides. So that's going to be e to the 8x plus 6. Okay. Um, so that's 4. All right. Now let's rewrite this in log form. So this would be like log base e. These change sides. So the 4 comes over here. The 8x plus 6 goes over there. Um, but we wouldn't really write log base e of 4. We would write natural log is equal to 8x plus 6. Um, subtract 6 from both sides, so that's natural log 4 minus 6, all right, just stick that on the end, is equal to 8x. Uh, of course, we now we have to uh, divide by 8 on both sides. Bada bing, bada bang. All right, and this is what we will put in our calculator. So we will wind up with x equals, let's see, all right, so we have the natural log of 4 minus 6 over 8. Okay, so that is negative 0.58, round up. Uh, number 11 this one uh, this one has like bases I mean we could use logarithms but it's easier if we recognize that um, 216 is 6 uh, to the third power you get the same answer either way okay so this will be 6 to the 3x minus 7 power and this is 6 to the third power 
like bases. If the bases are the same, then the exponents are the same. So 3x minus 7 would equal 3. Add 7 to both sides. So that's going to give me 3x equals 10. Divide by 3. That's going to give me x equals, well, just 10 over 3. Just leave it like that. All right, if you, if, you, if you gave me a decimal, I guess I would have to accept it. All right, 10 divided by 3. That's 3.3 repeating. So um, I'm really digging the fraction. But um, if you gave me 3.33, uh, that's groovy too. All right, thank goodness. Number 12 is the last one. So please remember, when you are multiplying the uh, like bases, you add the exponents. So this would be eight. The eights don't go away. I saw people doing that in class today. Um, the eights don't go away, guys. So it'll be eight, and we add these up. So this will be five x. The negative three plus one is negative two. Look how the eight is still there. Okay, so um, we're, we're not gonna get any like bases here, so we have to uh, use log form, starting with the base. So this would be log base eight. And uh, so these will trade sides. So the 3 is going to jump over here, and the 5x minus 2 is going to come over there. This is some decimal. Let's just leave it alone. Um, so let's add 2 to both sides. Notice I can't do 3 plus 2 and get 5. That's a no-go. So this would be log base 8 of 3 plus 2, just stick it on the end there, is equal to 5x. And finally, we divide both sides by 5. Shebang. So this is going to give us our answer. Um, of course, this log base 8 of 3 is going to have to be written as a change of base type situation. So, so log base 8 of 3 can be rewritten as log 3 divided by log 8. Um, but then we have the rest of it, you know, we have the plus 2, and uh, of course all of that was divided by 5, okay, the whole thing, and that's going to give us the x that we are looking for. So it's just a matter of how to type this into the calculator, all right, so be very careful. See this big fraction with the 5 in the denominator? Um, I would recommend starting with that. So, you know, hit your fraction button first. On. No. Don't want it to be that big. All right, anyway, hit your fraction button first. Um, you know we want that 5 in the denominator. So I would do that first, get that out of the way. Okay, so 5 is the denominator, so here's where we are. Now, everything in blue here is the numerator. So notice we have another fraction in the numerator. Okay, so go ahead and hit your fraction button again. So now we have a fraction inside of a fraction. Now this fraction is your log 3 over log 8. All right, so go ahead and type log 3 over log 8. Okay, but we also have that plus 2 up there, so don't forget about that. So this is how you type it in, so um, let's go ahead and hit enter. So we get this, 0 0.505. We want two decimal places, 5 or higher, you round up. So this will be 0 0.51. Okay, so x is equal to 0 0.51. Now, just to be clear, it's okay if you want to type this in in pieces instead of typing it all in together. We can do log 3 divided by log 8 plus 2 divided by 5. Okay, um, so you could do it like this. You could go, let me slide over again. You could go 
um, log 3 <coughs> divided by log 8 and hit enter okay um, so we've done that now we need to do plus 2 so I can just hit plus 2 and hit enter so now I've got this and now I need to divide by 5 so I could just go divided by 5 okay if you just do all of those uh, steps in sequence you know without uh, rounding um, you're gonna get the exact same answer so if you're more comfortable doing it that way go for it